Hello everybody and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about vulnerability management in Microsoft 365. But first, my name is Mark Connolly and I work for Imperion. I'm a cybersecurity architect and we help businesses all over the Midwest with their Microsoft 365 and cybersecurity needs. So vulnerability management in Microsoft 365 is a very, very robust platform. If you come from a traditional old school vulnerability management, you know, using enable MSP tools, whatever the case may be, when you hear the word vulnerability, you might think CVEs and patches, but Microsoft has a much more holistic view of what a vulnerability is. So once you get the various sensors deployed, if you look at the previous videos, we've deployed Defender for Identity, we've deployed Defender for Endpoint, we've got Defender for Cloud Apps, we have Defender for Cloud Enabled. Once you have the sensors uh, installed across the board, what you're gonna see is all of these different uh, misconfigurations, whether it's registry keys, whether it's a cloud setting checkbox that you need to flip. Uh, it might be a patch, it might be software updates, all of them are gonna kinda of go into this vulnerability management solution. So um, there's three main consoles that I like to look at. And the first one is from the Defender for Identity console. So if you go to portal.cloudappsecurity.com, this is where the identity security posture is. I really look forward to the day that they actually get this migrated over to security.microsoft.com, but for now, this is what we have to deal with. So if you're on the Cloud App Security Portal, Go to investigate, click identity security posture. And this is going to report specifically on vulnerabilities inside of your Active Directory system. So if there were uh, system owners or you know, maybe something legacy that's using LDAP instead of LDAP S, it would show up in this clear text credential exposure, uh, legacy authentications, Kerberos delegations. I actually went through in our LDAP uh, system our Active Directory system, and I flagged a few things just so stuff would trip up here. So if we go into modify Kerberos delegation, we can see that we have two accounts with unconstrained Kerberos delegation. So those are vulnerabilities. We would need to talk to the system owners of that service account in order to remediate that. Uh, print spoolers on domain controllers, that's a huge vulnerability. You need to work with your Active Directory systems administrators for that. Uh, laps, deploying laps on all your different devices, that is going to be something you probably work with your desktop, your help desk team on. Um, unsecured account attributes is another one. You know, Savic service has two account attributes that are unsecured. Let's see what they are. Do not require Kerberos pre-authentication and reversible encryption. Okay. So we need to get rid of those attributes on those accounts. So we've identified some of our Active Directory vulnerabilities here, and what we'll see is if we go over to our secure score, this is the next big portal. If you go to security.microsoft.com, over here on the left-hand side, you click secure score. You get this little overview here. Um, if you click on recommended actions, you get this ginormous list. And this list is actually populated based on the licenses that you have. So if you have a business premium license, you know, not as many things will show up, but if you have an E5 license or if you subscribe to some of the endpoint vulnerability management solutions, you'll see a lot more stuff light up in here. If you have Defender for Identity, if you have Azure ADP2, you'll see a lot of that stuff light up in here as well. So if we filter here and filter specifically to our identity recommendations, you'll see here that some of those things we saw on the other screen, protect and manage, Admin passwords with laps, exposed entities, how do we implement it? So those have all fed up into our secure score recommendations. There's also a list of um, recommendations in here for the 365 Defender portion. If you've looked at some of my videos about turning on safe links and safe attachments, phishing protection, things like that, those should all be in here. But one thing you'll see with the devices is we, we in the previous video, we showed the configurations. So it takes secure score a while to catch up. We just applied all that stuff. So it's not gonna report back here for a couple days. But a lot of the configurations and things, you know, local 
security authority protection, disabling those registry keys, all of that's already been done with that baseline configuration account. Uh, but if you get in here, what you'll see is these endpoint devices are actually in yet another portal, thanks Microsoft, uh, for vulnerability management. And what we need to do to get to there is we go over to our security portal and we go to vulnerability management We'll go to our recommendations. So this is the, the list that's going to include all of the CVEs and other things that you have, um, software updates that you need, and all the, a lot of these things also feed into the secure score recommendation. So it's a little bit confusing between those three portals, how to get to it all. But generally, the, the idea is we want to remediate everything on that list. These are all vulnerabilities to our environment. Uh, they increase our attack surface. They present opportunities for people to compromise things. So like if somebody actually got into the network and you know, out of the box, there's you know Python vulnerabilities, Chrome vulnerabilities, you know, open SSL vulnerabilities. Those might be something that a bad actor could exploit to further pivot and get into the network. So we want to basically get everything off of this list. And for the software-based stuff, there's an easy little process that kind of feeds into the desktop guys. Uh, you can actually go in here, you can see the exposed devices. You can click Request Remediation. And you have Software Update. We're going to open the ticket in Intune for it. We'll tell them they have until the end of the month, and we'll make this a high priority. Right? Lots of devices in the environment have this. We need to get it off. So we're going to go ahead and submit that. And what we now see is that we've created a remediation object. So if we go into our remediations, there should be one line here. Here we go. Update Microsoft Edge. We can go in here and we can see the status of it. See all the related things. And then over here in our endpoint portal, let's go to endpoint security. There's a menu item in here for security tasks. Because we clicked create a ticket in Intune, we will also see this here. And what the desktop guys see is the actual like detailed plan on how to remediate this, right? So they can click accept, go through, update their app packages, deploy it to the organization, call it a day. So the next big thing in vulnerabilities that we wanna look at is the actual Azure portal. So we mentioned we have Defender for Cloud and we mentioned that more than CVEs, misconfigurations are also classified as vulnerabilities, especially in the cloud, right? Because we don't have operating systems on a lot of the stuff in the cloud, we're using PaaS. There's no OS, there's no CVEs, there's nothing to patch, but maybe it's exposed to the public internet. Maybe it's encryption isn't the greatest. Maybe it's not using private keys. Those are all vulnerabilities as well, if you think about it holistically, as opposed to just a patching mindset. Uh, so if we go over here to our Defender for the Cloud, you can go over here to your list of recommendations, and you're gonna see all your recommendations to get your secure score up in Azure. So MFA, big one. Remediate vulnerabilities. Machines should have a vulnerability assessment solution. So these do have Defender, so it's probably just not reporting yet. Encrypting data in transit, big one. If your system is actually sending data unencrypted, you probably wanna know about it. You probably wanna be able to do something about that. Um, telling me to put a log analytics agent on machines. So here's another thing is you kind of got to think about this critically because one, there's a little bit of a reporting delay. So like a lot of the, I showed you the configuration profiles for the Defender for Endpoint. They've successfully applied all those registry keys and everything are set on my machine, but secure score still shows that that isn't the case. It hasn't, it hasn't updated. <clears throat> Likewise, there's two ways to deploy an Azure Arc machine. One is with the log analytics agent, which is getting deprecated. Uh, the next one is with the Azure Monitor agent, I believe is what it's called. Uh, they change names so frequently it's hard to keep up with it. So this recommendation is telling me that I should install the log analytics agent. But logic tells me if that's the agent that they're deprecating, I probably don't want to do that. Uh, so probably just a, they need to update their system to include the new agent on there. Um, enhanced security features. Let's see what this one says. Here we go. Yep, Defender for SQL. We don't have an applied Defender on all the subscriptions, so that makes sense why it's reporting that. Security best practices. There we go. 
So here's you know, best practice. It's vulnerability. Technically, it is a vulnerability in my opinion. If you have somebody with administrative access to this stuff and you're not putting them behind MFA, right? You're just asking for trouble. So having a line in the vulnerability report tell you like, hey, you have accounts that can access this resource without MFA, I think is incredibly valuable. It's not your traditional, hey, I can just patch it though to solve the problem. You then have to actually go talk to somebody, figure out what the right way is to apply conditional access, and then actually implement it. You, know, maybe you might be working with <coughs> the desktop team. You might be working with the desktop team. You might be working with the server administrators. You might be working with the database guys. You might be working with cybersecurity. You might be working with information security. Uh, you might be working with some vendor specifically. Maybe a vendor has like, access and they can access specific resources in Azure. If their account's not behind MFA, it needs to get resolved. No matter who it is that I need to deal with, it needs to get resolved, right? So I really, really like that Microsoft is kind of taking this holistic approach for vulnerabilities and helping you secure your environment. You know, these configuration type items are a lot of the times the ones that get overlooked. And a lot of the times it's the reason why a compromise happens. So really excited to see this. And, uh, you know, that's the basic gist of vulnerability management. It gives you a giant list to be to go fix and it's going to take you a long long time and it's going to require a lot of people and you're going to send a lot of emails and you're going to be chasing a lot of different things to get this list and just keep knocking it down over and over over time just keep getting a little bit lower and a little bit lower and you know over time as your secure score goes up your risk levels significantly drop so I hope this has been informative for you. Vulnerability management is a really big one in the Microsoft suite. So um, take a look around and see what kind of vulnerabilities exist in your environment and see what kind of steps you need to take to remediate them. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.